It was April 2012 when a woman known only as Mary and her children relocated to an apartment complex in Grand Haven, Michigan, United States of America. It's unclear why the move was made, but what is known is that they were welcomed with open arms by their neighbors. Two of the most hospitable lived just next door. 65-year-old retired Muskegon County Airport Police Officer Theodore Dyer, Ted, and his girlfriend. I remember the day when we moved in, ever since then, we talked to them on a daily basis. Ted and his girlfriend never had children, so they would take care of mine. They, in a way, adopted them, I guess. It's hard to find details about Mary's move, so we'll never truly know why Ted and his girlfriend took care of her children often. But it was clear that Mary trusted them, even though she had only known them for a brief period. After all, she chose Ted and his girlfriend to take care of the children over her own family members. I never had any reason to worry about my kids around the couple. However, something horrific was about to emerge in the summer of the following year, 2013. It was June 2013 and I headed over to Ted's apartment to tell my nine-year-old daughter to come home. It was late. I had this gut feeling that something bad had happened and for whatever reason, something just told me to walk into Ted's without knocking. It was just something in my head, just walk in. When I arrived, the door was slightly open, and so I peeked in. Ted was sexually assaulting my little girl. As soon as I saw what had happened, I burst through the door, grabbed my daughter, and went back to our apartment. I couldn't believe my eyes. I asked her if what I saw had actually happened, and she told me that it did. Police would be called to the scene as soon as the pair entered their home. When officers arrived, they were met with a flustered mother. She was in disbelief. According to a report, this hadn't been the first time Ted had assaulted the young girl. You see, she would go on to tell police that he had abused her twice in the past. Who knows, if it wasn't for Mary walking in, he may have gone on to assault her multiple times in the future. Theodore Dyer was arrested in connection with the incident and was charged with first-degree criminal sexual conduct. From what we know of the case, Ted would deny the charge that was placed against him but he was convicted just seven months later in January of 2014 and was handed a 25 to 50 year prison sentence, a life sentence. But Ted would have no idea how short that life sentence would actually be. After receiving his 25 to 50 year prison sentence, Theodore Dyer found himself as the newest inmate at the Saginaw Correctional Facility. That's located in Michigan, for those of you who aren't aware. It's home to some of America's most dangerous criminals. Roughly eight months into his sentence, Ted would find himself sharing a cell with this man, a then 51-year-old Stephen Sanderson. Stephen had been serving a life sentence when he met Ted. He'd been locked up for the 1991 murder of his then-girlfriend, 33-year-old Linda McLean. Believe it or not, he'd only been out of jail for a week before killing Linda. He had been out on parole after serving two years of a five-year sentence for larceny. That had been his third stint in jail. When Stephen had found himself sharing a cell with Theodore Dyer in August of 2014, he stated that they got on well. Ted would often tell him stories of his time spent in the military. However, two months later, Stephen began to look at Ted differently, after word started to get around about what he was in jail for. Someone mentioned that Ted was locked up for a CSC charge, so I asked him about it, but he didn't answer. Stephen had to take the information with a pinch of salt. After all, as he stated in his own words, many false rumors circulated throughout the prison. Even if it wasn't true, Stephen just didn't want to share a cell with him anymore and planned on moving. That move would be granted, but not in the straightforward way you would expect. You see, on the evening of the 28th of October, 2014, for reasons unknown, Ted opened up to Stephen about his charges. He would be murdered shortly after. He told me what he was in prison for, that he had, you know, was accused of raping a, an 11-year-old girl, and he got 25 to life for it, and, you know, I told him that's enough. I don't want to hear any more. Um, I first, you know, punched him a couple times. Still wouldn't shut up. Still kept telling me he wanted to explain that he didn't do it, that he was being set up and all this stuff, and... I don't know, I just got mad and then hit him and, and then I killed him. When I knocked, I hit him and knocked him out and then I took the shoelaces out of his shoes, tied them together, wrapped it around his neck and strangled him. 
then um, after I was done, I mean, I was I was aware of what I was doing, you know, and then I just put him on his bed and covered him up and climbed in my bed and went to sleep. I noticed, you know, we obviously we've been in, in your cell. Mm -hmm. That it appears that all of your belongings you packed, packed up. up. Yeah. Okay. When did you do that? Mm. Right after I knew he was dead. Right after you knew. So. And the reason for doing that would be. Because when you go to the hole, that's usually what the police do to pack it up. And I okay. figured, yeah, they're going to tear my shit up. So okay. let me just do it myself. So, yes. so what happened to the shoelaces? Lost them down the toilet. Okay. Now, those laces came out of Ted's shoes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then when you were done, you flushed it down the toilet. Mm -hmm. Why would you do that? Because I'm an idiot. I don't know. Just I mean, you know, obviously, I don't think right. I'm a in prison for most of my life, so my thinking isn't really rational. <coughs> I don't know, I just kind of... Thought that that was the appropriate thing to do at that time? Yeah. Yeah. I guess, I don't know. I just, you know, I know murdering somebody's not a good thing, but, I mean, Jesus, man, if, yeah. if the things this guy did, he things he said he did, yeah. I wouldn't want someone like that on the street again. So I, I do what's necessary. I do what some people won't. I mean, you guys are cops. You arrest people all the time for stuff that you wish you could shoot them in the face. I already know that. I'm not stupid. You know, I mean, <laughs> I understand. there's there's crimes that shouldn't be committed. So, you know, I just have, I don't know, I just don't have any empathy for okay. people. So. so so basically, what you did, you, you figure Ted got what he deserved. Ted got what he deserved. I believe that with all my heart. You know, I hit him a couple times, and I pulled the chair back and sat in the chair, and then um, he kind of got up posturing on me. You know, that's kind of like means, you know, he got up like, you know, so I was like, okay, you know, and then I caught him again, and when he went down, I was like, yeah, sucks to be you. I just don't think stabbing or shooting somebody is a little too impersonal. If you're gonna kill somebody, you might as well be personal about it, right? You think that's more personal? Yeah, it just you know, I know it sounds kind of crazy, but if you have to go to that extent, yeah, I want it to be personal. I don't, I don't like violence, but if I have to go to that extent, then I want it to be personal. You, you just mentioned that you made some reference to that you were sorry. Mm. I mean, obviously now. Sorry I'm for. No, not so. I'm not sorry for killing him. Oh, no. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, no. I was sorry that I caused them problems. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm glad, glad to clarify that. Yeah, no, so. I'm not sorry at all for killing him. Okay. You know, it's my understanding that you, you are serving a life sentence right now for, for homicide. Yeah. Um, here again, I, I guess, so you're hearing her there, the, the details of that. Um, I, I guess my question is, was that the kind of thing that, it, it appears to me that, that what you did was because of the crime that Ted committed? That I, I do what's necessary. Okay. I do what some people won't. I mean, you guys are cops. You arrest people all the time for stuff that you wish you could shoot them in the face. I already know that. I'm not stupid. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I understand. There's, there's crimes that shouldn't be committed. So, you know, I just have... I don't know. I just don't have any empathy for okay. people. So, so, so basically, you, what you did, you, you figure Ted got what he deserved. Ted got what he deserved. I believe that with all my heart. Okay. And like you said, you, you said you were sorry, and it was not sorry for the act of actually oh, killing for Ted, causing but, the officer but, problems. Yeah. For having you guys to come down here and go through yeah. all this bull crap over a piece of shit. So, okay. So, I mean. I, Steve, at this point, obviously, you know that we put together our report. Mm -hmm. It's going to go to uh, the Saginaw County Prosecuting Attorney. Mm -hmm. um, he will make a decision if charges will be authorized. Um, you're, you're here for life as it is. And he'll waste everybody's money and time. and.
yeah. make things more difficult for everybody else. Yeah, I know that. But but you're still afforded your rights. I mean, you're afforded, you know, the opportunity for for a trial, uh, give an explanation of why you did what you did. Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't want to put his family through anything. I'm quite sure they didn't do anything. I'm just going to plead guilty and then get it over with. So no sense in wasting people's time. Okay. Did you ever tell anybody else uh, outside of the corrections officers that are here? You said you mm -hmm. said goodbye to a couple people. Yeah, just one person. I'm not going to bring his name into it, but one inmate that, you know, I was good friends with. I told him what I did. And, want them to understand, you know, because like I said, I, I didn't really bother people. Yeah, you know, I would get into little too. fights here and there, but nothing, you know, I wasn't bothering nobody. It just, I told him what I did before I told Prove It, because I just wanted him to understand why, and, you know, I guess everybody knew that he was in here for that but me, Yeah. because he said he already knew that, so I was kind of... Is, is that why you're so open with us tonight, is you just want us to understand why, that this is... You know, no, this I is just, a big problem that with that with this guy. That no, it's just the truth. Right. I mean, if I do something, then I don't know why why be ashamed or lie about something I do. I mean, it just makes it more difficult for everybody. A couple times you said that he um, he he kept he was trying to deny his charges with you. Well, yeah, he was saying well because it got me mad because he you know first off twenty five to life they don't give you twenty five to life. Yeah. He said it was his first offense, and then I'm thinking, dude, 25 to life on your first offense? And then he said, well, um, it was just touching. And then, dude, 25 to life, I'm not a fool. You know, that's penetration. That's bad, bad penetration. Well, uh, then he said the mother set him up, and then he said... Well, he was just a dick, man. I, I guess what I'm wondering is if uh, you said that he was denying it, but then also he's going into details with yeah. you about what had occurred. Yeah. So that kind of contradicts what he's what he's yeah. saying. Yeah, right? and and I'm and I'm that's so it's getting you frustrated because you you know that he's lying. Yeah, and I'm and I'm telling him this, you know, and you know he's always been lying uh, crazy shit before, but nothing like this. It was usually just ah, uh, just bragging old man or something, you know. Yeah. I don't know, just... There's no uh, no chance of him harming himself here, killing himself, hanging himself? No, he didn't. I did it. it I did it. Oh. You're aware, I think you mentioned earlier, that you were going to try to not lock with him anymore. You were yeah, gonna bring I, it up. when he first started talking, that's the first thing I did. I told him, shut the fuck up. You know, I'm going to get, one of us was getting moved tomorrow. So that was my initial plan to just go to McLean and say, you know, get this fucker out of here. Because I had been locking with him for two months and I didn't know any of this. Yeah. yeah. Apparently everybody else fucking knew it, but I didn't. And they, you know, failed to tell me anything. So you know it's an option, but then it, then he just pushed it too far. And yeah, and he just kept going with it. So even though it was an option in the morning to get away from the guy, do you feel that it, you did better by not allowing him the chance to get or get free and get out on the streets not anymore. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Certainly do. Certainly do. I mean, it's my opinion. I don't think something like that. I've been in prison a long time. I've seen people come back and come back and come back. Now there's too much shit in the world now. We don't need I mean my personal opinion is that people like that should, you know, die. Do you see people coming and going from here a lot? They, they get released and the next thing you know they're back in for whatever reason? Oh, yeah. Yeah, this state has no, uh, nothing. The state is nothing. The state just, you know, pushes you out. You know, they don't care what happens to the people out there on the streets. You know, they talk about it all the time, coming back in about what they're going to do when they get out. You know, not him specifically, but I hear a lot of uh, uh, child molesters and rapists and murderers and crazy fucks always talking about it, you know, what they're going to do when they get back out. You know, I deserve to be in prison. You know, I can't function in society. I already know that. I deserve to be here, and I accept that.
I cried and I laughed. It was a bunch of mixed emotions. I never want to see anyone die, but in this case, I'm happy for my daughter's sake. I think it was a relief for her, knowing that this wasn't going to happen again. Was Mary's reaction to the news that Ted Dyer had been killed in prison by Stephen Sanderson? Stephen was charged with second-degree murder. He would plead guilty to the charge four months later in February of 2015. Over that four-month period, the news had begun to circulate. People were divided. This is what Stephen had to say in response. You know, since this all happened, it's kind of been... People think I'm some kind of hero, but I'm actually not. Um, I just, you know, did what I thought was best in the time that I was given. I don't know, I just, uh, I've been getting these emails saying that, you know, it's not my position to judge anybody. And I want to make it quite clear that I didn't judge him. You know, I know God is the only judge we have. I've just set the appointment up. So, I don't feel bad for what I did, you know. I feel bad for maybe the families, his family or something. But as far as remorse towards him, no. In April of 2015, Stephen Sanderson was handed another life sentence for the murder of Ted Dyer, a child predator. Lead to the second count of uh, murder in the second degree. Guilty? Yes, sir. And doing so freely and voluntarily? Yes. Doing so because you are guilty? Uh, yes, sir. All right. Did you? The reason I killed him was because he was a child molester. But you did, in fact, kill him. Oh, sure. And you intended to kill him. Oh, sure, yes. Well, if it's all right, I'd like to tell you where it started. Go ahead. All right, well, we were, he was my bunkie, and I had found out that he was in prison for uh, child molestation, a really bad case. So um, that night he was trying to justify why he did it, and I just told him to be quiet, and he would have to leave in the morning to find a new cell. But he continued to talk about it and try to justify it, so he was a little bit bigger than me, so I got down, and I hit him in his face a few times, and when he fell, I wrapped a cord around his neck and I took his life. Before he can even begin this sentence, he has to die and come back to life. It's kind of an unusual situation to be in for myself. The sad thing is, I don't recall a time I stood next to someone involving a capital offence who had anything remotely close to a normal childhood. Mr. Sanderson had a very, very difficult childhood. Maybe if he'd been born at a different time to different people, he wouldn't be standing here today. But that did not happen, and here we are. Despite his crimes, he's a likeable guy. He's done some really bad things. You can't help but like him. A couple months ago, Stephen asked me to tell Ted's family that he kept telling Michigan Department of Corrections personnel to not place him in a cell with a child predator because he would kill him. He wanted me to communicate that to them in hopes that maybe they can recoup some financial benefit from this. That tells you something about him as a person.